Hello, thank you so much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to show you how we can use non-negative matrix factorization for the purpose of spectral unmixing, which is a very common process in hyperspectral image processing. Let's get started and see how we can do that. As I said in this video, I want to talk about the use of non-negative matrix factorization or NNMF in spectral unmixing. In hyperspectral imaging, each pixel captures the reflectance spectra across a large number of spectral bands. In many cases, the area represented by a single pixel contains multiple materials. This results in mixed pixels, where the recorded spectrum is a combination of several pure material spectra, known as N members. The problem arises when trying to extract meaningful information from these mixed pixels, as the true spectral signature of each material is no longer visible. For example, in remote sensing, a single pixel might capture a mixture of water, soil, and vegetation. The spectrum obtained from that pixel is not a simple reflection of one of these materials, but a weighted combination of their spectral signatures. This presents a challenge in applications like land cover classification, mineral exploration, and environmental monitoring. Spectral unmixing assumes that the observed spectrum at each pixel is a linear or sometimes nonlinear mixture of several end members' spectra. The goal is to identify the pure spectral signatures or N members of materials in the scene and then determine the abundance of each N member in every pixel. The linear mixture model is often used for this and the formulation is as is shown here, where Xi is the observed spectral vector for pixel I. A sub IK is the abundance of the kth N member in the pixel I, and E sub K is the spectral signature of the kth N member, and N is the number of N members here and ni or n sub i is representing noise. m here shows the total number of pixels. The key assumption in this model is that the observed spectrum of each pixel is a linear combination of n members and that the abundances are non-negative and sum to 1. These are physical constraints. Mathematically, this can be expressed as shown here. Now, how can we use non-negative matrix factorization in a spectral unmixing? NNMF or non-negative matrix factorization is an effective tool for spectral unmixing because it decomposes a matrix into two non-negative matrices, naturally enforcing the physical constraints, non-negative abundances, and spectra. The idea is to factor the hyperspectral data matrix X, as shown here, into two matrices, where X is the data matrix, where each row is a spectral vector for a pixel, and W is the abundance matrix, where each entry represents the abundance of an N member in a pixel. Finally, H is the N member matrix where each row represents a spectral signature of a material. The objective of NNMF is to minimize the difference between the original data matrix X and the product of the factor matrices W and H. Mathematically, this can be expressed as shown here. The algorithm iterates to find W and H under the non negativity constraint. This ensures that the abundances W and N members H are physically meaningful, or in other words, they are non negative. So we first randomly initialize matrices W and H with non-negative values, and then we update W and H iteratively to minimize the reconstruction error as shown here, and then we converge when the error reaches a minimum, yielding the final abundance and N member matrices. The intuition behind NNMF in a spectral unmixing is twofold. First, N members or matrix H, and second, abundances or matrix W. Let's first talk about N members. These are the pure spectra of the materials in this scene. Each row of H represents a distinct material, like vegetation, soil, water, and etc. And abundances. Each pixel contains different amount of each material, and the corresponding row of W gives the fraction or abundances of these materials for that pixel. The advantages of NNMF are non-negativity constraint and simple interpretability. Since the spectral reflectance and material abundance must be non-negative in the real world, NNMF naturally models this constraint. And also, the decomposition is easy to interpret physically, as both the end members and their abundances are non-negative, meaning no negative mixtures of materials are allowed. Let's go to Python and show you guys an example. Okay, here's the code for this problem. We first import the libraries we need. And this is where we're reading the image. The last band in my hyperspectral data is NAND, so I'm just excluding that band. You might not need to do this step. And then I'm just showing the rows and columns and the bands of my hyperspectral data. And I'm going to be reshaping it to apply the NNMF. And the NNMF is applied here. 
This is where I'm getting the abundance and end members matrices. This is where I'm reshaping the abundance matrix into an image. And now I'm going to use those end members to classify the images as shown here. So you got to know that I, that I already specified the number of end members as 5. So if you know the number of distinct materials in your hyperspectral image, this could help, but I specified it as 5. And this is 5 different colors to show the classification map. And this is where I'm showing the result of the classification. And here I'm visualizing the abundance map of each end member separately. And at the end, I'm going to also be plotting the extracted end members as shown here. So very simple. Let's run it and see what happens. This is the image shape. As you can see, my data has some NAND, but I excluded that already, and you might not need to do this. The NAND values were located in the last band of my hyperspectral data. Okay, that's it. This is the classification map, as you can see, for five end members. And these are the abundance map for each end members. And these are the extracted end members from my hyperspectral data. So as you can see, you have to specify the number of end members yourself, which can be challenging sometimes, but you should just specify the number of distinct materials in your hyperspectral image. In later videos, I will also show you how you could specify the number of end members in your hyperspectral data at a higher accuracy. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.